Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love what you see here, we're starting our day off with watches, and I'm the man with all the answers. Reach out to me for pricing. My email is tmasso at thewatchbox.com, and I buy, I trade, I sell, and I sell what I buy. I buy what I sell. Always looking to build inventory. We will take a trade. We will buy your entire collection either way. We pay cash, we pay fast, we make the process super simple for you, and no upper limit on value paid. We will buy your Henry Graves Grand Complication, or pardon me, Super Complication, if you have it to sell. Let's jump straight in with a watch that is the opposite end of the spectrum, relatively simple and accessible. This is no Henry Graves Super Complication. This is part of the Michael Schumacher series of ambassador-sponsored speedy reduced watches that came out of the 1990s. Now, the original Speedmaster Schumachers were speedy reduced, but in yellow, red, and blue. For the three teams Schumacher drove for at that time, yellow for Jordan, blue for Benetton, his first two championships, and then red. And red was Scuderia Ferrari at the time. Back in the mid-90s, he hadn't won anything big with them. This watch came out in 2001, however, to celebrate the first of his five consecutive championships for Marinello. And you can see a 6,000 piece limited edition from the year 2001. It features Schumacher's name, signature, as well as his first great achievement with Ferrari. He would go on to win again consecutively in 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004. And the watch is gorgeous, channeling the spirit of the late 60s through early 1970s. It has the so-called racing dial, characteristic of some late Speedmaster Professionals in the 60s, and then again on the Speedmaster Mark II in the 70s. A combination of a sort of checkered stagger that looks a little bit like the checkered flag that you'll find at the end of a race. It also includes a combination of white, red, and orange accents. It does mention racing explicitly right here. If you've got the right stuff, this one's not for astronauts, it's for drivers, and that endears it to me. Plus, this being a pre-2006 version of the Speedy Reduced, it has that lovely evocative plexiglass, or I should say, Hesolite thermoplastic refraction when you tilt it. Now, it's an easy watch to wear. It's about 12.5 millimeters thick, and it's short from lug to lug under 45 millimeters, so it's a 39 that wears really nicely. The reason these are called speedy reduced isn't because they're any less a watch than a standard moon watch. It's just because they're a little bit smaller, a standard moon watch being 42, this being 39. This wears better on a broader range of wrists, so it's a unisex option. It's great for guys who don't like the bulk of the Speedmaster Professional, and critically, it's automatic winding, so if you don't like manual one watch just want to put your watch on in the morning and not sweat it this is a great way to do it and while 6000 admittedly is not a hugely limited number the fact is they don't come up all that often in the modern era meaning most of the people who have the 6000 know to hang on to them it's also a wonderfully versatile watch as it does have plenty of luminescence this being post 1997 it's after the tritium era at omega so this is all original factory luminova now we can up the ante on the driver's watch front. Back in 2021, Zinn gave us this, possibly my favorite Zinn watch ever, and I owned an EZM 1.1 for four years. This is the R500. This is how Zinn does a driver's watch. Now there's a lot to love here. 70s inspired. It starts with the perforations on the leather strap. This combination of red and black, very popular back in the 1970s. The perforation often featured on leather as well as synthetic driver's straps. You can see a matching media blasted buckle and we have a case that is all satinated and monoblock construction so you can see that the bezel and the mid case are all one piece everything loads through the back the watch is made of grade 5 titanium which in addition to being hypoallergenic is both lighter and harder and more scratch resistant than steel and unlike most drivers watches this one's 200 meters water resistant with a screw down bullhead crown it is number 149 of 300 300 pieces were made and the idea being that this watch would sit on your wrist and you see how the dial is angled so when it is on the wrist and i'll throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist you can see how it angles towards you when your hand is on the steering wheel of a car so you can keep track of your driving exploits and the watch has a lot of elements to that end starting with a tachymeter scale I believe I should probably wind this watch before firing it up. It is a screw-down crown pursuant to that 200-meter water resistance. Most driver's watches are not highly water-resistant, so this one's a bit of an anomaly in that regard. 
An easy watch to love, you can see it has a tachymeter scale outboard, which along with the chronograph can be used to gauge the speed of a car over a kilometer. It's calibrated to 500 units, so you can tell that automotive speeds are exactly what it has in mind. Now, the bullhead system works exactly like this. When it's on the wrist, it's just easier to operate as you're not craning your wrist like this, you're just starting, stopping, resetting. Also easy to use in the hand, as you could quickly and easily index this, almost like a handheld stopwatch. Now taking a quick look at the dial, we'll do a loom shot. By the way, all of the indices, metal and applied, so not a printed dial like you'll find on an EZM. This is an upscale look. It was expensive by Zinn standards, so features like that, the applique indices, are what set this apart. Well loomed, no trouble reading it in the dark. You can see the dial includes a couple of off-white sub-registers with spade-style hands, and this is actually a nod to previous Zinn driving watches. This wasn't their first, and if you look at some of the previous models, you will find this color often used on the dial, and this style of hand used on the sub-register was used extensively on Zinn's prior driving watches. We have a 7750 architecture, and a power reserve indicator has been added up at 12 o'clock. You can see it sweeps from red when you're almost empty to green and broad. And as you wind it, you can see the power reserve indicator moves quite quickly. Well, a lot of 7750s that feature this balanced tri-register layout lose their quick set mechanism. That would be called a 7753. This is not that. This actually does feature... Let me move out of the date change danger zone there. This actually does feature a quick set for the date, so you can rapidly cycle that date. You don't lose the quick set because of the counter orientation. And you'll note the good taste and attention to detail as Zinn uses a date disc that's the same color as the sub-register. Inside, automatic winding. It's a cam oscillating pinion chronograph operation because it's a 7750, which means actually if you press and hold the chronograph start trigger, because it's an oscillating pinion, it has a lot less play than a conventional lateral clutch and that's just endemic to the 7750. They're almost, if you press and hold, that's how they're designed to be operated, press and hold, they're about as smooth as a vertical clutch to start up, and then it's automatic winding with a 48-hour power reserve. This is a really cool watch, probably my favorite watch on today's show, and you can see just how well it wears. Super cool and super easy to wear as titanium and sapphire with a 42 millimeter diameter. It's round and lugless, so it wears a little bit like a Giuliano Mazzulli Menometro or an old lugless 70s watch like my Memovox E877JLC. It's also 42 millimeters lug to lug just as it's 42 millimeters in diameter, so almost anyone can wear this thing. We're sticking with our driver's watch theme. This wasn't planned, by the way, guys. It just sort of happened. Here's a model that came out in 2008, and while at first glance you might be like, oh yeah, 50 fathoms flyback chronograph, this is actually not that. Not only is it not a diving chronograph, it's not even officially a 50 fathoms. This is the Blancpain Speed Command. You, you will not find 50 fathoms written on this watch. It is a driver's themed timepiece, and pursuant to that, it features a carbon fiber dial, which is real carbon fiber, a tachymeter for gauging the speed of, again, a car, usually over a kilometer, and a bi-directional rotating bezel that is emphatically not a dive bezel because it's not unidirectional. It's designed to be lined up with the minute hand more rapidly from whichever direction is closer to the minute hand. That's why it's bi-directional, but it's still, listen up, a super vocal and very mechanical 120 click. Now the watch uses orange and red Luminova, which surprisingly takes fairly well. It takes and holds the charge pretty well. You'll also note that because the bezel is capped by a sapphire, the whole bezel can be loomed with no danger of losing that Luminova to hard contact. And it does feature a lot of elements that are common to the 50 Fathoms, even though technically it's not one, including that lovely and lush cambered sapphire cap atop the bezel. And then we have a flyback chronograph here, always appropriate for motorsports because you can reset and restart instantly without first stopping, allowing you to more easily time events that occur in rapid succession. We have a screw down crown and we still do have the 300 meter water resistance of the 50 fathoms chrono because after all this uses the same case. But the pushers, which appear like they might be screw downs, they're not actually. You still have 300 meter water resistance, but the Pushers are always available to use without worrying about screwing them in or out. And then we have a little date disc down at 6 o'clock, which is the same color as the dial, with the same orange printing, 
and you can see that it blends in seamlessly because it is color coordinated. There was also a version of this watch in bright yellow, but I think the orange feels more unique. 45 millimeters in steel, you can see it's coated with diamond-like carbon, and let me just be clear, PVD is a process. DLC, diamond-like carbon, is a material. Physical vapor deposition is what PVD is. You can have cheap PVD or very expensive and durable PVD, and diamond-like carbon, a material, applied by physical vapor deposition is very scratch resistant and you can see how well this watch has aged over time unless you grind it against a granite or brick wall i find this material doesn't disfigure you can also see it's all muted and finished matte in a way that few 50 fathoms cases are so it's a more subdued look even as it is ultimately a large and impressive watch. It's not bling, it's presence that sets this watch apart, and the watch has it. Stark, massive, colorful, and forceful. It even has little hex bolts and straight bars in place of spring bars to retain the strap, which is what you want because it's more secure. Flip it all over. We have a Frederic Piguet F185 movement, unidirectional automatic winder, column wheel, vertical clutch, 40 hour power reserve, and handsomely hand-finished, particularly the engine turning, the black polish of the screws, the quality of the beveling, and then the Cote de Genève atop the winding bridge. We have an automotive wheel spoke inspired rotor right here, and you can see just how beautiful it is. Now, it's a small movement, no doubt, but it's an exquisite one, being under six millimeters thick in spite of all of its complications and automatic winding, and adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. The column wheel feel is exemplary, and thanks to the vertical clutch, it truly is a seamless engager with absolutely no jump or stagger. Plus, we have the flyback restart capability. This watch is stacked. Let's see it on my wrist. It's a big watch, make no mistake, but it's actually under 51 millimeters from lug to lug, and I would totally rock this. It's large, but then again, it's large and it's in charge. So when you wear this thing, it's got a commanding presence, but it doesn't immediately betray its provenance. You don't look at this and instantly think Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Rolex. This is one for the connoisseurs. This will draw comments and questions from people who know Blanc Pen, but not necessarily gawkers. No one's going to be asking you if you're a millionaire, whether it's real, how much it costs. You'll get admiring glances from people who like fine timepieces, and the few who know will be impressed, and that's all that matters. This is one for the connoisseur, who also happens to love automobiles. By the way, how much do you love this black and orange Halloween-like color scheme? Plus, on the underside of the strap, a rubber inlay to make it super supple against the wrist, and to ensure that the strap will be long-lasting. The driver's watch theme continues, and I'm going to show you one of the scariest things I've ever encountered on a luxury watch. This is the Roger Dubuis Excalibur Spider Pirelli, which means, well, you know, spider in Italian Mark lore generally describes a convertible car. Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, Maserati. Well, here's the scary part. This is also a spider. A push button on the crown, a quick release on the strap, and yes, a quick release system on the bezel allows you to swap out these components for included alternates. The idea here being, this is a Pirelli-themed watch, and like a Formula One or Le Mans racing pit stop involving Pirelli cars, this watch gives you the ability to swap during a stop and convert your spider. So the alternative pieces all include green accents. Now, several different colors of these were made in 88 pieces back in 2021. So, for example, red, blue, green. 88 were created with these green accents. And yes, there are green-tinted alternate parts, such as the crown shoulder, such as the bezel, just like the strap, that come with the watch. You can see we have a little seatbelt buckle-like system, so you can quickly and easily replace the strap in the heat of battle during a Grand Prix. And we have little tracking numbers, codes, on the strap that actually link the straps to the original Pirelli racing tires from which the strap rubber was actually cut. So this is not just Pirelli-themed. It's not just actual Pirelli rubber, but it's Pirelli rubber from an actual Formula One tire. And if you're familiar with F1 and racing, Pirelli always color codes its tires. Different colors mean different things. Hard, intermediate, soft compound, wet weather. So that's what the color actually means. And you can see we have lovely color coordinated green accents. It's super easy to refit the strap. It's just like a seatbelt buckle. You pull it out and you stick it in. 
actually I should probably pull it off again so you can see the back side of the movement. This is the Pirelli case back over a movement that is called the RD820SQ Skeletonized 820. We have here a micro rotor winding system that energizes a 60 hour power reserve. We have beautiful dark rhodium across bridges that are skeletonized. You can see that they're engine turned. You can see the sections of the perlage. And then on their edges, you can see that beveling on the side of each one of those skeletonized bridges lighting up. You can also see if we get close, we'll do our best here, but just to top the keyless works, the Poisson de Genève, because this is a Geneva seal watch. You can see I've engaged the motion works, which moves the hands. You can also see I'm winding via the winding pinion of the keyless works, which allows you to easily see the open mainspring barrel, and you can actually watch the coil of the mainspring grow tighter, and the spacing, the concentric spacing, grow tighter as well. It's a sort of informal power reserve, and with experience, you'll actually know how close you are to the end of this watch's 60-hour power reserve. Flip it all over. You'll note you can also see the open barrel from the case back. We have this star-like motif that's used under the barrel and under the rotor, as well as on the dial side. The Excalibur, of course, this is the Excalibur-style bezel. We have the hands, we have the dial design, and it is a loomed watch. So you can see there's no trouble seeing this exquisite watch in the dark. We're not used to seeing the Poisson de Genève on such avant-garde and aggressive timepieces, but this watch certainly qualifies being made of DLC-coated grade 5 titanium. And again, here's the little push button I talked about on the crown itself. You push that button to remove the crown shoulder and place a Pirelli rubber replacement in green. This watch is just a ton of fun. It has the GNF Chatelain double deployment with the leaf spring that we've seen on a million different brands, most notably Richard Meal. It is a wonderful type of clasp that is very secure. And the watch is secure for surface swimming with its 50 meter water resistance, so it is a true sports watch. We'll throw it on my wrist. It's 45 millimeters in diameter, so it's large, but being mostly titanium and sapphire, it is also very light. I have no trouble wearing this watch again. As with the 50 fat, well, I should say speed command that we just saw, uh, this is a watch for which the look is supposed to be big. It's not supposed to be petite. It's supposed to stand out. It's supposed to be bright. This is a might makes right kind of watch where size and virtue go hand in hand. And to be fair, Roger Dewey makes its own hairsprings, its own balances, its own movements, its own cases. It is a true manufacturer and it has earned the right to be a little bit outlandish because you can get away with almost anything if you do it with good manners. And this watch has impeccable breeding. All right, driver's watch detox, although maybe not as much as you think, because Laurent Ferrier, namesake of the brand that bears his name, was a racing driver in the 70s and 80s, a watchmaker and a driver. He had high placings in endurance racing competition, including at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So this Laurent Ferrier Origin Classic Blue actually comes with an Alcantara strap, which is the same material used on the contact points of high performance automobiles and super premium performance road cars. It's a sort of synthetic suede that is both more durable than suede and a lot more expensive. Uh, so don't let the synthetic nature fool you. It, it's a much more premium material than suede leather. You can see bright blue on the bottom, darker blue on the top. The watch, 40 millimeters in diameter, is all grade five titanium, which as we mentioned earlier in this cast, is both harder and lighter than steel. We have a vintage inspired onion style unbranded crown that's slightly countersunk. You can see there are some subtle detailings, but everything is fluid here. There are no severe character lines, really the only severe character line here being the junction between the bezel in the case and the interior faces of the lugs. Now the watch has 12 millimeters of thickness so it's easy to wear and you can see the case blank will slip underneath the cuff. The dial is opaline so a frosted sandpaper like texture. Our indices as well as assegai spear hands in white gold, crosshair center and then a few may fade from light blue at the center to dark at the edge. Flip it all over and it's just as impressive. The reverse side is media blasted to give it a lovely matte finish with anthracite coating. You can see some of the details are truly exquisite, such as this fully rounded and polished 
spring that doubles as both the click for the barrel and the click spring all in one component. You can see that we've got mile wide bevels here. This is the real thing. Just like Merle Haggard was the real thing in country, this is the real thing from Geneva. Those bevels are broad and finished by hand, drawn out long, second only to the likes of Dufour, Romain Gautier, Grubel Forcy, that kind of company. And even then, it's a dead heat qualitatively. You can also see the same standard of beveling and polish applied to all of the jewel sinks. Manual wind, 80 hour power reserve. You can see we have both sharp outward points where two bevels meet and quite a few of them. And then we have an inward angle right here where two bevels come to an interior cleft crease. Truly special stuff. Look carefully and you can see the application of modern technology. See the anchor and the escape wheel. Note how they're both made of skeletonized metal. That can only be achieved with galvanic lithography, LIGA, creating micro-profiled components that are ultra-precise and also super light. And then we have a balance that is free-sprung, adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. It has an overcoil hairspring for concentric breathing that is consistent running in any position. And so free sprung, six position adjusted with an overcoil, and then the base plate beautifully media blasted with all screw heads black polished and their slots and circumference chamfered. You could see satination on the ratchet wheel as well as the barrel, as well as the train wheels, a very special watch with a lovely fluid compound curved titanium pin buckle to match. We'll throw this watch on my wrist and it wears beautifully. Short across the wrist, flat, super light, all in titanium and sapphire. This is Geneva watchmaking at its absolute finest, but I have a watch that's at least gonna take a different school of thought on Geneva watchmaking, and that is the 56 complete calendar from Vacheron Constantin. So here we have a model that was launched in 2019, part of the 56 collection, inspired by the 1956 reference 6073. Truth be told, they don't share a whole lot, this is a much larger watch, and the only actual physical resemblance between the angular 6073 and the watch you see here, these little triangular outcroppings atop each of the lugs, that's really it. This is very much its own watch. Now, perhaps surprising for a pretty committed dress watch, we have plenty of luminescence. That's not a problem. We have a lovely brown dial, which has an opaline frosted center and then a sunburst underneath the hour track with rose gold hands, Vacheron logo, indices, and numerals. We have a day, we have a radial pointer style date, we have a month, we have a moon phase with crescent style aperture. And then you can see as we roll this 40 millimeter watch over, we have caliber 2460 QCL1. Automatic winding with ceramic rotor bearings, 40 hour power reserve, five position adjusted, Geneva Hallmark attesting to the standard of finish, which you can see right here is self-evident and of exceptional quality. The rotor's 22 carat, not 21, not 18, God help us, not rose gold plate of tungsten. No expense spared here. This rotor features four different types of finish by hand. And then you can see that the Geneva Hallmark is on the case as well as the movement, as since 2012, roughly mid-year, Geneva Hallmark has been a full watch standard of finish, quality, materials, and precision. And this watch is an exceptional example of the fusion of all of the above. Throwing it on the wrist, you can see it's not too broad across the wrist. It wears nicely. If your wrist is 14 centimeters circumference or up, you're going to wear this really well. There's some myths about the 56 collection that they don't have in-house calibers. They're not Geneva Hallmark. All of that was born of the base model which has a Volfleurier movement and is not Geneva Hallmark. But that's just the base model. This is nothing like the base model. A deluxe flagship for the 56 line. It's complicated. It's all precious metal. It is manufacture movement, and you better believe it is Poinçon de Genève. It has all of that going for it, along with rarity. This is one of the best deals in high horology watchmaking because Vacheron, unless the overseas is in question, remains a very underrated brand. Although next we have the king of underrated brands. Cover up the name, and this is as good as anything in the business. Let's get a little bit closer. Vacheron, Moritz Grossman, Carrie Voudelainen, Alanga Unzona, Patek, Audemars Piguet, Jager Lecoult. They've got nothing on the quality that you see here. But people can't get over that name because they say Breguet and his sons are long dead and not involved. To which I respond, 
Neither a Chagher nor a Lecoult has run that company for a long time. Neither a Patek nor a Philippe has run that company for a long time. Neither a Lang or a Heine works at Lang und Heine. And all of these brands are extraordinarily well regarded because of their quality and their capability. And that is what you get with Breguet. By any other name, it would smell as sweet. Here we have the 5177, a model 38 millimeters in white gold that came out in 2006. It has a Grand Faux enamel dial fired up to 20 times in an oven at up to 800 degrees centigrade. It's a glass paint, vitreous, that's fired to create this glossy surface. And the base underneath the glass is solid gold. It's a craft art that takes a lot of work and a lot of time and has a high rejection rate, which is why high-grade enamel dials are rare. And you can see that it features lovely Breguet-style Arabic numerals and handsome fired blue steel Breguet-style hands. Take a look. You can't quite see it, but I assure you it's there. Underneath the hands, about halfway between the six and the cannon pinion, there is a little laser-etched Breguet secret signature. And the attention to detail is superb. Look at the faceting of the date window. It steps down. It's not a sheer cut through the dial. And even the date itself is somewhat offset in terms of its proportions, so that as you go to the quick set mechanism, but as you change the date, the outer numeral is always larger to fit inside that oddly shaped trapezoidal aperture. And you can see the font used is lovely. Very serif intensive. Turn it all over, by the way, the case entirely handmade. Hand welded and hand finished lugs. We have straps attached by screws and bars. We have a case flank that's cold rolled to create the coining and then hand finished. And then on the back side, we have more craft art. We have an enamel dial. We have a rose lathe guilloche white gold rotor. And this is Breguet manufactured caliber 777Q. La Magna and Breguet are one company today with La Magna, which has been paired with Breguet since the 80s, even prior to Swatch ownership. La Magna developing movements for Breguet. And this is the 777Q. Automatic winding, 55 hour power reserve. Q means it has a calendar. And you can see that the beveling is not just world class, but adjacent to the balance, we have one two sharp interior angles where bevels meet. A lot of watches, even those with Geneva Hallmark, don't give you one. The watch is sophisticated. Traditionally finished, it still has impressive modern materials. We have a recessed bolt aerodynamic free sprung balance adjusted in six positions, an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and if you look carefully, you can see the iridescent purple blue of a full silicon low friction escapement. And again, a 55-hour power reserve, whereas a lot of auto logerie watches from high-end brands don't have quick sets or hacking, this movement has both. And you can see the Cote de Genève are exquisite across the bridges, the engine turning beautiful on the rotor. We have micro-perlage in some of the recesses of the bridges, and then solarization on the barrels. Everything here is of the highest grade. The screw heads are broad, black polished, they're chamfered, and then the timepiece itself only 38 millimeters in diameter and super thin. There's a reason this model is still in the catalog. Again, Breguet, take it seriously. Not because Abraham Louis Breguet made this watch, but because he would be proud that it bears his name. It's as good as anything in the business. Sometimes though, as good is not enough and you want the absolute best. And that's what we have here. Grubel Forsey, when it puts its mind to something, can create things no one else can achieve. And what we have here is the fruit of the Naissance d'une Montre project, co-sponsored by Grubel Forsey, to preserve all of the trades and skills associated with total manual fabrication of a watch and the tools necessary to make it. Launched in 2019, this is the handmade one. Only two to three of these are handmade per year, which is why this one says 2022. You may ask, doesn't Grubel Forsey make almost 200 watches a year now with the sports watch production? To which I answer yes. And you may reply, well, didn't Grubel Forsey previously make 100 to 150 year, a year before the sports watch? And I say yes. And then you ask, why only two to three of these are not all their watches handmade? My answer is not like this one. This is is 95% handmade. Hands, screws, case, bridges, plates, everything. This watch absorbs six 
1,000 man hours. That's the equivalent of three years of work hours for one craftsman. This watch has screws that require 12 individual steps to craft and finish individually so that each screw absorbs eight hours of labor. The frosting of the bridges, the cutting of the tourbillon cage components. Normally, a tourbillon cage can be CNC'd in one piece. Here, no fewer than three pieces make up the cage itself and 69 parts the whole tourbillon assembly because it can't be cut by a mechanical lathe in one piece. It is manual wind, free sprung, the hairspring, bent by hand and shaped to create an overcoil inside and outside. All of the black polish manually finished, not just to start, not just to finish, but both. You could see the frosting of the bridges by wire brush, and you could see that not only is the anglage a mile wide and mirrored, but the immensely thick bridges themselves in German silver are mirrored across their sheer sides internally. We have a little track here for the seconds and track outboard for the minutes that are actually fired enamel handcrafted. And as you could see, the bridges themselves feature satination and polish. We also have, flip it all over, exquisite vintage finishing, harking back to a time when Cote de Genève as a finishing technique did not exist, and this sort of finish would have been more common. We have golden chiton cut manually and pressed manually, holding the pivots. We have the barrel arbor, we have the pivot of the center wheel, third wheel, and then, of course, the terminal end of the train at the tourbillon. We have different sizes of screw. Each one required special operations to, to craft. And when we get really close, I'll do my best to show you this, but we have internally beveled wheels, the inner circumference as well as the spokes. Each one of these wheels features 40 individual interior angles. Remember, there are some Geneva Hallmark movements that don't have one. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're everywhere, interior angles, mile-wide bevels, satination, black polish, the best of everything, one of three made in 2022, manual wind with a big slow beating, 60-second tourbillon, and a 60-hour manual wind power reserve. The winding action on this watch, the feel of the click detent, is the best I have ever experienced on a watch. And you could see the case back, no engine engraving here, handmade one, one of three, tourbillon, engraved manually with a hammer and a burin. This is as good as it gets. And as with most tourbillon watches, it has an inimitably loud beat against the ear, a very distinctive double step heartbeat, and only 13.5 millimeters thick in white gold and 43.5 millimeters in diameter. This is one of the thinnest and most wearable Grubel 4C watches I have ever encountered. It may also be the most desirable. If you love this or any watch from today's show, please email me directly with all your questions and proposals. I always entertain offers, tmasso at thewatchbox.com.